you know, no one has the hiccups this evening. That's why you're listening to me. Um, <laughs> we kind of heard, heard a Lou Reed type vocal in there, um, just something off the wall. But I actually enjoyed that a lot. I liked the texture. There was some really unusual tonalities going on in there and uh, a little bit of lead bass going on there, which I actually enjoyed. You know, a little sidetrack here. Uh, our friend Dave tweeted, he said it kind of reminds him of the mod scene in the 80s. You know, and I tend to agree because that was a time of like the specials and the selector and that sort yeah. of thing. So, I mean, that, that's a good point. I can kind of see that too. Yep. We can always count on Dave for good comments. Well, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, guys, just Dave's got, actually got a band called Grass Cutters, so, but he's a faithful listener as well. So. Okay, cool, cool. But, uh, so with the stuff you have coming up, um, are, are any of the tunes actually like, finished, or are they kind of still all in the works? Um, we think they're finished for a week, and then we realize that they're not finished to us yet. And then uh, we kind of go back at it, and um, I don't know. I think that they're honestly, a lot of them are more finished than a lot of our tunes from our first record were when we went into the studio. Right. But we're more seasoned at this point, and we know what we want out of them more, I think, than we did previously. And then we have a lot of things that we like um, in terms of like riffs or vocal melodies that we think need to be on this record and we haven't built the rest of the texture yet. Right. And uh, so I, nothing's fully ready, I would say. There's a, there's a couple songs we play live that we just need to make a couple adjustments to and we're really comfortable playing them. But it'll still probably be a couple months before we get into the studio. Now, did you, do you find with the EP, like uh, when you listen to it over again, you have like moments where saying, you know what, I should have done that differently or it could have been better if I did it this way? Um, with some things. There was certain things that I had done originally on guitar that I left out in some of the songs because I thought it would take away from bass parts or right. you know, vocals and I regret not doing them because I do them now again live and I think they would have been fun. fine. But other than that, you know, um, I think that the songs are what they are. They're, they're raw and they're what we wanted them to be when we went into it. We're uh, getting more polished now, okay. but we kind of we kind of broke into the scene down there, being the raw band from up north. So it kind of nice. built us a reputation that huh. we're we're trying to own up to now, but still evolve. Nice. Now, would you say with all? I mean, since you guys gig so much, would you say with the amount of gigging you guys do, uh, you just kind of you kind of grow more because. You have a lot more freedom. Cannot uh, stick to what we call the conventional format. Um. Yeah, we definitely do. And honestly, we play for a lot of different types of crowds. It seems. Um. The the you know Central Salt Lake area when we play down there, it's kind of more rock and roll and less pop. And we'll we'll play our you know heavier songs there, and people will like our heavier songs more. So they'll you know tell us that, give us that kind of feedback. And right buy those songs <laughs> whereas when we play in Provo which is like the the hub that I was saying earlier we'll you know we've played a lot of acoustic shows down there we've played more of our melodic poppy tunes and that seems to do well down there and you know it's it kind of all just depends I know, we like but, to tailor our set lists well no I mean it's, it's whatever works for you guys right I mean that's what it comes down to because I mean essentially you're not just doing it for the fans but you're doing it for yourself as well I mean you want to play because you want to play not because you have to yeah exactly exactly and we try to get gigs that we love to play you know whether they're free or paid um, it's mostly about who we're reaching out to from that gig and that's that's how we try to lock them down right well, no good good point you know and just before we get to our next tune here I saw this the other day I think it was on Facebook Anyways, what it said, no, it was actually on Instagram. What it said was uh, $5,000 spent on equipment to go to, to spend uh, $50 in gas for a $25 gig. Real musician. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it nowadays it's so true because, I mean, that's the way it's going. It's kind of, it's, it's all DIY and, you know, and people are just kind of fighting to be seen. So they're spending the money on equipment that they... That they do need, or or they think they do need. So, you know, it was it was a good point taken. It's like I mean, I'm I'm just a kind of hobby musician, so I'm not I'm an actual musician. So, but 
seeing that and, and to the amount of bands I've talked to makes perfect sense to me and it's 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 so true because you no know, people are just wanting to be heard and they just want to be heard and that's what it comes down to. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. So next up we're gonna get to another song off the NYC Factory Fast compilation. This is Lila Bianca and this is a disagree. Dig this. <laughs> Tell me, am I the fault? Isn't it? This is where I, I am up to be. I carry pretty little scars. Would you care? Can even tell that these are just bad memories. In the back to disagree. These are about in the You got a wish and I guess it pleases me In the back to disagree He's all about an open love I carry with me Lila Blanca, no, that... <laughs> That song was called Disagree. Now, this song was pretty trippy. It was kind of like a mix of 50s, 60s with kind of new wave electronica. So it, it was a pretty good feel to it. And the vocals were pretty solid. Like, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it definitely had a different rhythm that I could I could dig. Um, I like some of the guitar tones there and some of the chorus type things. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I see where you're coming from with the electronica. And then the, the decades sort of feels. I like that. Nolan Catherine? Yeah, we were. <laughs> that was really trippy. And just listening to it, the headphones, what an interesting mix that was going back and forth there. Uh, what did you say? Blind Melon? A little, little bit of a Blind Melon feel to it. Actually, I can hear that too. Yeah, good I just, point. I like the looseness of the groove and everything. It was really interesting. Now, guys, um, what is next besides uh, me possibly getting into the studio in fall? More likely, more than likely, spring. What's next for you guys? What have you guys got planned? Um, just playing better gigs. Honestly, uh, getting to the top of the scene, playing with the the biggest artists that you know are down there. We're we're starting to make ourselves known, and uh, we're kind of in with some of the venues where we're starting to get opportunities to open up for touring acts that are that are bigger. Um, we we opened up for a, a rap guy, which was not booked very well that was not an audience for us but uh, <laughs> we did it nonetheless and he was like he's a bit he like he's on the like major radio stations and stuff you know so we're getting opportunities to play gigs that have more potential whether that one did or not is questionable but they're <laughs> they're coming <laughs> so you know and it seems like we get opportunities every month that i didn't think we were going to have for a while so it's really it's hard to say honestly but things are moving a lot quicker than we ever anticipated. Very cool, man. Nolan, Catherine? Yeah, I would have to say, you know, I looked at 
I looked at as much as I could online about you guys, and I was really impressed by uh, how much you guys are gigging for a fairly short amount of time. And I hope this is not inappropriate to ask, but you were being you must have management, is that correct? Or are you um, very recently we got management. It's and honestly, it's it's loose management. It's more just booking. Sure. Um, I until we get into a point where we are doing this full time and we need a full time manager. Right. Um, I don't trust anybody else at this point. Fair um, enough. Understand. I think we want to get our footing first before we have a full time manager, and uh, you know, just kind of figure out exactly who we want to be and have somebody in it who we know has our best interest in mind at all times, you know, and who loves the music more than we do. Yeah. So when we get to that point, we'll get that. But for now, it's it's more just like it's it's booking more That's than anything. Great. You guys are getting a lot of gigs, and then you know so many people struggle with that. They have a great, well, for lack of a better term, product. You know, they, they have they have the music, but they aren't able to find the venues to play. So you guys are really fortunate. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we lucked out, and and the lady we're working with, she she really does wonders for us, and uh, she she really believes in us too. So that's we'll, we'll where this goes. Yeah. Right. That's very cool, man. So uh, that is going to do it for tonight for our NS uh, part one. Uh, so thank you very much for coming on the show, man. It's been a great time. I really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having us. It was a blast. Catherine? Yes, we had, a, we had a great time. It was really nice to meet you and listen to you. Nice to meet you guys as well. So be sure to keep us posted when the new album comes out because we'd love to have you back on the show. Absolutely. We'll tweet about it, have it on everything, and we'll we'll be in contact. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, man. You guys have a great night, and we'll talk to you very soon. Thanks. You guys, too. Take it easy. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. That was Mojave Nomads. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview because that was uh, very interesting because uh, Utah, you know, you, you don't think of music uh, sound out of Utah, so it's kind of interesting that there actually is a bigger scene than we, th- than we thought. So. Yeah. I was impressed. So we're going to take a quick little break here. We'll be back in about 5-10 minutes. We'll finish off the compilation plus some more new songs on NMS Part 2. So we'll be back in about 5-10 minutes. Until then, hopefully no one's hiccups will have gone away. And we'll be right back. Bones out. (laughs) 